So we are going to determine dy over dx. Let's start. 2x minus function 1, function 2. First function prime is 1 times the second one. Don't forget the minus to distribute. I normally put parentheses just to make sure you're not confused with that. x and dy over dx. And then plus 2y dy over dx. And the right hand side is 0. This goes, this goes, and here I will factor out dy over dx. I'll put dy, do, it doesn't matter, really. Negative x plus 2y, dy over dx. These two go to the other side, negative 2x plus y. So finally, dy over dx will equal, I'll factor out negative 1, and I get 2x minus y. I factor out negative 1, and I get x minus 2y. And the negative that I factor out from the top or the negative that I factor out from the denominator will go away. Okay, all I have to do now is plug in x equals the square root of 3, and later on I will plug in x equals negative the square root of 3 and see what happens. If these numbers, the results, are not the same, I have to go back to the drawing board. Okay, I'm going to plug in the square root of 3. So 2 to the square root of 3 minus the square root of 3. Sorry, I have to determine the y value. Where is my... Okay, we have to determine the y value. Right? We already have it. It's 0. Okay, so this is zero. I'm going to make it very big because <clears throat> I have a white on there. Okay, now over uh, the square root of um, 3, uh, minus 2 times 0 is 0. I simplify these two, and I get 2. I repeat for dy over dx when x equals negative the square root of 3, and I get uh, 2 times negative the square root of 3 is negative 2 the square root of 3, the denominator is negative the square root of 3 because these two are 0. I should have written them here, and I should, not to make a mistake, not have to go back anywhere, and I get 2. Since they are the same, same, it is true what they said, show that the tangent lines of those points are parallel. They are parallel. I don't have to determine the tangent lines. They are parallel because they have the same slope. So the slope of the tangent line at the square root of 3, comma 0 is the same with the, the tangent line at the point negative the square root of 3, comma 0. Any questions? For this, we just have to show that when we did the, the math we just showed, they're both the same. We don't have to write anything extra after that. No. That should be enough. It just, just shows that I, I showed, yeah, I showed that the slopes are the same. I showed that I determined the uh, uh, slope of the uh, of the tangent lines at those points. Okay. So maybe that is confusing. Let me just remove it because y is zero, so I really don't need to write anything on this side. When you go back to the notes, I don't want you to get confused. So this is zero. For a second, I forgot. I was, I talked too much. For a second, I forgot that those points were determined, and they came out. They came from y equals zero. That's why it's always safe to write them when you evaluate. Always, so there is no error. Okay. Any questions? So I have a question. Sure. Yes. I have one. Yeah, yeah. So please. What made you what made you put it over, like you did 2 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 3? What made you do that? X is the square root of 3, so I have to replace X by the square root of 3, and I have to replace X by I the see. square root of 3. Y equals y zero, 0, and that's why it's 0. I'm, I'm just replacing in this expression these values. All right, thank you. Better? Got it. Yes. Perfect. Other questions for me? 
Okay. I think we have enough, but of course, please come back with more questions from anything. So let's move on to section 3.6, derivatives of log functions. So let's start first of all with the basic uh, uh, natural log function, ln x, natural log function. And um, I would like to start by um, just simply giving you, I don't like to do that, it's very rare, but um, when we differentiate such a function, we get 1 over x. I should write times x prime, but that's 1. Before we move on to um, differentiating natural log of a function, something like this, natural log of function f of x. When I differentiate that, then I have to follow this rule, which is the chain rule, right? So let me write it now since I started. It's 1 over f of x, 1 over x, 1 over f of x, but this time is multiplied by f prime of x. One important result, because we are going to use it in chapter 5, is the following. Important result. To be to be remembered. Can anyone refresh our memory on the absolute value of x? What are the options for the absolute value of x? So x is greater than zero. So the absolute value of x can be replaced by x itself if x is greater than or equal to zero. And the second possibility? x less than zero? I mean, at negative, negative x. x. So the absolute value of x can be replaced by negative x whenever x is less than zero. This is extremely important to remember. So now, if I have natural log of the absolute value of x, because the absolute value of x has two options, so will natural log. Can anyone give us those two options for the log this time? Knowing that the absolute value has two options. What are the options for the function, natural log of the absolute value then? What do you think? It's okay to be wrong. Anyone? Would it be ln x? Very good, of course. I cannot have 0 in ln, so I have to restrict it to greater than 0. Good. What about the other one? F prime of minus. Excellent. Very good for x less than 0. Good. So we know that there are two options. Now I would like to differentiate this function since I already have the formula. So, the chain rule. I don't know what to do with this cable. I'm going to try something else next time. But I don't want to interrupt right now. Okay, so at this point I would like to differentiate this. In other words, differentiate natural log of the absolute value of x. So obviously there is a derivative for this and a derivative for this. So what would be the derivative for the first one, for the first branch? 1 over x. Excellent. 1 over x for x greater than 0. What would be the derivative for the second one? Negative 1 over x. 1 divided by negative x multiplied by the inner function prime, which is? 1. Careful. Negative one. Good. 
for x less than 0. And how much is 1 over negative x times negative 1? Positive 1 over x. So here it is. For anything except 0. So, when we differentiate the absolute value of 1 over x, we get 1 over x. Because both branches will result in the same thing. 1 over x, 1 over x. Of course, x cannot be 0. Why is this result important? And you, I'm sure you will remember this. For when we get to chapter 5, when we are going to integrate this, I'm not going to write it right now. And we need to, the result to be natural log, not of x, but of the absolute value of x. So in chapter 5, we're going to integrate the, the um, uh, function 1 over x dx. And the result must be natural log of the absolute value of x. Okay? So this is a very important result. We're going to see it again. Okay, I would like us to uh, practice uh, differentiating um, log functions, and then we'll go back to the second half of this uh, section. I'm not going to say what it is just yet. Okay, I'm just going to select a, a few problems with natural log, and then we're going to talk about the situation in which we have log base a of x, and what happens to that. Remember, when we had a to x prime, we got a to x times natural log a. But now we're going to see what happens when we want to differentiate such a function in a minute. I just want to practice natural log first. Um, OK, so let's take a look at f of u, which is u divided by 1 plus natural log u. So we're obviously asked to find f prime of u. It's directly or explicitly because the function is given to us. So this is our question. OK. First of all, I see that this is a quotient. I have to use the quotient rule. So f prime will be the denominator has to be squared. I differentiate the top function, I get 1. I multiply by the denominator. I subtract u multiplied by the denominator prime, which is only 1 over u. It happens that I can simplify u from the top with u from the denominator. And this will give us negative 1, and there is a positive 1 at the beginning. And 1 minus 1 will be 0. So the answer is natural log u over 1 plus natural log u squared. Questions on this problem? Feel free to choose from the end of 3.6 or I will. Any questions? Okay, so let's look at a uh, function composition, like natural log applied to sine squared x. Again, the function is given to us. We are going to differentiate directly. So this is f prime of x. This is a function inside a function. There are no addition subtractions. I start by differentiating the outer function. When I differentiate the outer fun function, I have to have 1 over this, whatever that is. Now I have to multiply it by the inner function prime. When I differentiate a function with the power, I bring down the power. I subtract 1 from the power, and now I differentiate the inner function prime. When I differentiate sine, I get cosine. Can I simplify? Remember, simplify factor, simplify factor are the key words here. Yes, I can. I can get rid of, of uh, a sine x. Then I have 2 cosine x over sine x, which is 2 cotangent x. In order to condense it.
Um, we looked at the quotient, we looked at the uh, function composition, let's also look at the product. G of R, they say. Any questions for me, please? I don't want to move on if you have anything for me. Any questions on this? 